Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that mini project. We're going to do a few more of those uh, down the road and uh, we're sort of going to learn a bunch of stuff in between them so that we can, you know, learn a little, practice a little, learn a little, practice a little. I think that's a really good way of learning JavaScript. And so in this video, we're going to learn about string manipulation. And it sounds fancy, but really it's not. It is actually super, super common in JavaScript too. So string manipulation is basically we take a variable that's like a sentence or maybe a number and we we manipulate it, we change it, we force it to be something different. And there are several different ways of doing this, but in this video, we're just going to go over a few of them. So we're going to go over uh, to lowercase, to uppercase, split, join, slice, and substring. There are way more of these, but I think this is a really, really good way to sort of just get used to how we can manipulate some data. So first and foremost, let's create an H1 with an ID of sentence. And let's go ahead and put some lorem ipsum in here. And so when I save this, it's just going to look pretty boring. And that's okay. We're not trying to make this look nice right now. We are simply trying to do some JavaScript. JavaScript does not necessarily mean things look nice. CSS means things look nice. JavaScript means things are functional. And so let's go ahead and create a script in here. And we want to grab all of this text in here, all this lorem ipsum. So we could do, you know, var sentence is equal to, and then we could paste our lorem ipsum in there, or we could do it the JavaScript way and say document dot get element element by ID sentence. And let's call this sentence node. And I'm gonna have to make that smaller. Hopefully that's still okay to see. And then let's do var sentence is equal to sentence node dot inner text. And let's go ahead and just console log this. Console.log. The sentence is going to be sentence. And when we refresh and right click inspect, right click inspect and go to our console. Ah, there it is. We see all this gross text in here. And this one might actually be better if we change the view to, let's change it to bottom. And so we have a sentence in here and it says a bunch of lorem ipsum stuff. So we can go ahead, get rid of that console log. We know that it's working and that our sentence is in fact a string. Now, how do we know that it's a string? Well, we could always do type of sentence. That tells us it's a string. That's pretty cool. We can also just type sentence, sentence. And because it has the quotations around it, you know, it's a string. So let's just clear that out and let's put sentence back in there and you can see that it's sort of highlighting itself there but it's not actually doing anything yet so cool we have our sentence text now what if you wanted to make this all uppercase so let's do var upper sentence is equal to sentence dot to upper case that's literally all we have to do and we can actually test this out in our console too so we could do sentence dot to upper and you can see that it's autofilling for me and then opening and closing bracket and what this says is, this is a function. We'll learn more about functions down the road, but basically this is going to actually take our sentence, the, the lorem ipsum text, and it's going to do something with it. And that's what this means. These opening and closing brackets or these parentheses means it's going to do something with it. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And look at that, it's all uppercase now, all of it. So we know that works and we can simply keep that in there. We can also do var lower sentence and let's go ahead and do sentence dot to lowercase and by the way we are creating new variables here based on whatever this string is this variable so we're not overwriting sentence over and over again we're taking the same sentence which is this value in here the lorem ipsum and we're saying hey make it uppercase that's not going to work either hey make it uppercase and then also hey make it lowercase and so basically we're just copying the data over and over again without actually overwriting it. So if you ever want to see this actually work, we could go ahead, let's just copy that, grab that whole thing, copy, paste, and let's type lower sentence. And we can see that it's all lowercase. The first L should be uppercase. It's not, it's lowercase. R right here should be uppercase. It's not, it's lowercase. And so that worked. What if we just wanted to get like the first 10 characters of a sentence for whatever reason we just want the first 10 and this is actually strangely useful 
you wouldn't think you would use something like just get the first 10 or the first four, but yeah, we uh, use it quite a bit in JavaScript. So let's go ahead and create a substring. So we're going to call this first 10 chars is equal to, that stands for characters, sentence dot substring. And this is going to take two optional parameters here, really, although the first one's not really optional. So let's just do 10 and let's Let's not do this in here. Let's go ahead and do it right in here where we can experiment. So we can actually see what it's returning here. It says m dollar sit emit. So da, 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 m dollar sit emit. So what this is doing is saying, hey, start at character 10 and grab everything else. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it took those first 10 characters and completely disregarded them. And it started here at m dollar sit emit, probably butchering that Latin, by the way. And we can actually see that that's what it returns here, m dollar sit emit. Cool. And so that's how we use substring. This is pretty cool. I didn't actually know that the console would do this, but it gives me from and an optional length. How many characters do we want? So we can start at the 10th character. And let's say we just want the next 10 characters. There's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, we could do the next, let's say 30. There we go. So we have between character 11 and 30 showing up in here. And so that's what substring does. And that's actually really useful because sometimes, you know, maybe a user inputs a URL and they don't put www in front of it. And maybe your website requires that or HTTP in order to turn it into a proper link. This is where we'd use something like that. So let's go ahead. Well, this is gonna be first 10 characters. So let's do zero and 10 and let's do zero and 10 in here because this is basically a live preview. Zero and 10, we see lorem ipsu. Let's do 11, lorem ipsum. First 10 and because that variable says first 10 characters, let's do first 11 characters. Okay, these next two are going to introduce a new data type. So we know about strings and we know about numbers. We haven't really used numbers too much, but we know about them. Now, what happens if we wanted to get all the individual words in here? Well, in JavaScript, we have this method called split. And basically, we can tell it to split anything. So split anything in here. And we can tell it what to split on. So we say split on every sentence. What this is going to do is take every single, every single space in here, like what we have here. So it's just going to match whatever's in there. And it's going to turn this into a list. It's going to turn it into an array. So let's go ahead and let's do a live example. So let's do sentence.split and let's split it on every single space. And let's do words is equal to. And look at that. We have all the different words in here. And if I make this bigger, we have all the different words and we can actually open and close this and it's going to show us all the words. So we have a list now. Now these are called arrays. In JavaScript, this is called an array. Let me type that out. It's called an array. Hooray, array. And so really all an array is, is a giant list of numbers or strings or objects, which we haven't learned about or all sorts of other different types of data and data types that we haven't learned about yet. And it can hold all of them in a list and it will maintain that order. So we can see lorem, ipsum, dollar, sit, amet, so on and so on and so on. So now we can go in here and we can say var all words is equal to sentence dot split and split it on every single space. And let's go ahead and do console.log all words. Let's go ahead and give this a refresh. And this console logged for me and this gave me all the words. Now, where is this useful? Well, right now to us, this is not very useful, but down the road, this can be very, very useful. We can use a thing called a for loop and loop through every single one and perform an action on them. We're not going to get into that just yet because that's a little more complicated than what we generally like to do at the very beginning of JavaScript. I just feel like that might overwhelm some people. Uh, it certainly overwhelmed me when I was learning JavaScript way back in the day. And so I'd like to keep this, you know, nice and simple, learn step by step. But okay, so we have all these different words in here. And let's say 
let's say for whatever reason, we wanted to piece those all back together, but we didn't want to piece them back together using a simple space. We don't want the sentence to look like a normal sentence anymore. Maybe we wanted to put parentheses around every single word. Well, we could do that. We could do, let's do var. We're going to bracket the words here. And we are going to join all of these together. So we're going to take all words, not sentence. We, we want to take this one because this is the list. All words dot join. And then it takes a string. What do we want to join it by? Well, if we do this, and let's actually just save this. And let's see what bracket words looks like. Hey, look at that. Bracket words has all the different brackets around it, to the exception of the first one and the last one. Well, guess what? We can do some string concatenation here. So we can add a bracket there, and we can do a bracket here, and refresh, and let's do bracket words, and ha ha, look at that, all of our words have brackets around them now. And just for fun, what if we did sentence node dot inner text is equal to bracket words. Hey, look at that, so now we're actually doing something with our page, that's pretty cool. So I'm going to remove that uh, because I don't want to change that yet. And there's one more that I want to talk about. And so really when we're looking at this and this, we have split and join. So split is going to take a sentence and split it based on whatever you want to split it by. In this case, we used just a regular space. And then we took whatever that list of words was and we said actually join them all together with something else. And so this looks a little weird. We don't actually need to use opening and closing parentheses like this. We could, if we wanted to, use a bunch of spaces. Let's go ahead, refresh, and type bracket words, and look at that. So we could do that as well. And so join and split usually work in tandem together. And there's one more in here. What if, let's go ahead, actually refresh this, and let's do all words. We have this list of words in here. What if we just wanted the first three words? So let's go ahead and type all words dot slice. And it's going to say, this is a function. That's what the F means. It's a function. Where should it start and where should it end? Let's start at zero. Because when it comes to computers, we start counting at zero. As humans, we start counting one, two, three, four, five. Computers don't. Computers go zero, one, two, three, four, five. Because to a computer, zero is a number. To a human, zero means nothing. There's literally nothing there. So number zero, and let's go to uh, number three. And that's going to give us the first three words, lorem, ipsum, dolor. So and then we can go ahead in our code and we can say var first three words is equal to sentence. No, oh, that's not right. I already fooled myself. All words dot slice and just take the first three, just, just grab a slice of it. So we just want to slice this. We say, hey, if this was a giant pie, we want three pieces. Alternatively, we could also do all words dot slice. And what happens if we just said, start at this one here. So six, I went one too many, I guess on that one, because <laughs> I didn't count them. Uh, but it says all words dot slice, start at number five and go to the very end. So you can see here, uh, there's 20 items in this list now. Again, we'll talk more about lists down the road. They're super, super useful, and they're actually not super complicated either. Uh, but it's going to start at number five. So it's going to start on 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's the one we told it to start on. Start on uh, consectator. Probably should have used words that I can actually read. Uh, but yeah, there it is. It starts on consectator. And now what we can do is we can say, hey, we actually just want... Every word between the fifth word and the tenth word, we want all of them, and then we want to put it into a sentence. So now we can actually do something kind of neat with this. So let's go ahead. Let's grab var middle words is equal to all words dot slice, and we want to grab uh, number five to number ten. And then we can do var, I don't know, call it make sentence, middle words dot join and let's join them with a just a regular space and then let's go ahead and do sentence node dot inner text is equal to make sentence 
And let's just give this a refresh and watch how it's going to take probably from here to here-ish, I'm guessing because I'm not counting the words, and it's going to replace this text with those middle ones. Ta-da! Just like that. It just replaced them for us. And again, one last time, if we go and view our page source, look at that, we have all of it in here, but hey, JavaScript said, nope, grab the sentence node, grab that inner text so that we can work with this as a variable. And so we've got a copy of sentence here, a copy of sentence here, a copy of sentence here, here. And then uh, with these, we can do different things if we wanted to. And like at the end, where basically we took that sentence, we took this sentence, we took all of those words, and we broke it apart based on spacing. And then we turned all of those words into bracketed words. So there were no more spaces, just brackets all over the place. And that's sort of where it leaves off, because we didn't do anything with that. Then we said, ah, actually grab the first three words. So we said, okay, well, there's a list of words in here broken apart by the space. That's what split is here. And we said, just grab the first three. So we grabbed lorem, ipsum, dolor. And that was the first three words. And then we said, ah, we're not actually going to do anything with that. Let's take the middle words. Let's take all the words. Again, that's all of these. Split on the space. Grab number five. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then grab up until the 10th word. So one, two, three, or eight, nine, and then 10. And then we said, hey, you know what? Grab those 10 words and put it back into a sentence. So we don't want a list of things, we just want a regular sentence. And then we said, ah, change that text. Change it to be whatever those five words are. And there it is. We have those five words, just like that. So this is a base introduction into string manipulation. Now, at this point in time, you're probably thinking, hey, that's not useful at all. But in the coming lessons, we are going to make use of quite a bit of this. So it's really, really good to know that these exist. Even if you don't use them every single day, it's good to know that they, they exist. Now, me as a developer, as a full stack developer that includes the front end, I use these almost every single day. But hey, if that sounds like a lot of pressure, you're still learning JavaScript. Just remember, you are still learning. You are a student of JavaScript. You don't need to be the very best. You don't need to know all of this off the top of your head. You can always Google it. Pro tip, all of us senior developers, we Google things nonstop all day. So don't feel bad if you ever have to Google it. And then lastly, just don't feel like you have to remember all of it because frankly, you don't. You just need to know that these types of functions exist. So it's like, if you wanted to take all of your words and make them uppercase, you don't really need to remember that it's dot two uppercase. You just need to remember how to access it. And so, for example, we could do sentence dot, and I just type UPP for uppercase, and look at that. It gives me two uppercase, and all I have to do is add parentheses around it, and it does it for me. And so it's like a little reminder all the time. It's always there, and you don't have to feel the pressure of knowing all of it right away. Now, I would really, really appreciate if you could give this a shot. Just go through each one of these Write it out by hand. I know it can suck writing things out by hand, but if you write it out by hand, you're going to create muscle memory. And one day when your brain gets stumped and you can't really remember all of it, you know what? Your fingers are just going to start typing away and they know what they're doing. You're thinking about something else and your fingers are just doing the work. And it does actually work like that. So go ahead, give that a shot. And then we're going to head on over to that next lesson whenever you're ready. And let's learn about accepting some user input and making use of that.